and just before tip, we found out Ben Vanderwall, who started last night, is out with an illness. And you know, you see Bob Ritchie starts out in a 2-3 zone. Maybe that's to conserve some of the legs and energy since he know he has since he knows he has a lot less depth than he usually has. Here's the freshman, Jacob Meyer. Had a great game against Wichita State and gets the shots off to a good start. Well, I think we should remind our viewers that Coastal Carolina is at home, so they're accustomed to these rims. Even though they're wearing their road teals tonight. <laughs> Furman in the home white. First shot off the mark for Marcus Foster. Here's Henry Abraham. Same starting five for Cliff Ellis's shot to clears as the first two games of the season. They're one and one coming in. That ball taken away by Garrett Heen. Here's P.J. Smith in transition. Mm, that's one J.P. Pagese usually would knock down, but he's shown a little bit more patience. I think that Furman felt like they rushed against Liberty a little bit yesterday, so they want to be more patient on the offensive end. Foster the shot fake and the take to the hole. First two of the game for Furman off the hand of Marcus Foster. Very good offense. The ball reverse sides of the floor, and it now gives them a chance with their score to set back up into an aggressive 2-3 zone. Coastal Carolina played well last night against Wichita State. 10 for 25 from three-point range. Woo! And they continue that hot shooting tonight. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, Black Moon, a guy who can shoot the basketball, but you see how quickly Furman gets back down the floor. Coastal Carolina coached by the venerable and sartorially splendid Cliff <laughs> Ellis, 77 years young. He is the dean of D1 coaching. Most career active wins in all of Division I basketball. He's at 9.07 and counting. Yeah, you can still see the passion, uh, him coaching right now. I talked to him a little bit before the game. He said, listen, the last thing any team wants to do, regardless of the field that we're in, is to leave here 0-3. And, and so you're going to see a sense of desperation from both Furman and Coastal Carolina tonight. The next win for Cliff Ellis will tie him for ninth all-time in Division I wins with the late, great Jim Phelan. The one thing that people probably forget about Coach Ellis is that he's done it. His victories have come at all different places and levels, whether that's South Alabama, Clemson, Auburn, or here at Coastal Carolina. Of course, I'm sitting next to someone who knows Cliff Ellis all too well because Cliff Ellis coached you at Auburn. No doubt. Here's Foster again in transition. Oh. This time, it's pinned. A great defensive effort by John Ogiaco, 22 and Teal. Here's Blackman for three. Keelan Blackman is two for two from distance. Yeah. Foster, bully ball, and Marcus Foster's taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, that's what you expected, especially after the output from yesterday. He and Blackman both putting on a show, uh, going tit for tat, and I don't expect anything different. I, I love the body language of both of these teams here early, coming back from a loss. There's the point guard, 13 and Teal. Henry Abraham gives it up to Blackman. Back to Abraham. And it's stolen away by Garrett Heen. And taken right back by the shots. Three minutes gone by, frenetic pace in this second round game. We talked about Furman rushing on offense. It looks like Coastal's doing that a little bit today. Moving screen, correct call. Well, Bob Ritchie's got his work cut out for him. We were talking to him the day before this tournament started at practice, and he said he felt like it was the deepest team he's ever had yep. in all his time at Furman. That depth is going to be severely tested the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, it certainly is, Rich. And you think about a guy who's won 72% of his basketball games. That ranks 20th amongst all active Division I head coaches. That three-pointer by Foster, too long. Here's Easley. Top scorer for Coastal Carolina. He's off the mark on that shot, but it's tracked down by Ogiaco. Jacob Meyer never shy. 
And this is what Furman likes to do. Beautiful. Get out in space and push the pace. One thing that you notice here early is Furman is doing a much better job at going from defense to offense. Now, why is that? Yesterday, Liberty rarely turned over the basketball. That's a problem that the Chanticleers have had, and they are taking advantage, getting out on the break in transition, which they are accustomed to doing. Marcus Foster was three for six from three last night in that 30-point effort. He's doing his work at the rim so far tonight. Completes the three-point play. It is Coastal 9, Marcus Foster 8 in the early go. <laughs> Here's Easley. Sixth year of college basketball. Fourth different school he's playing for. That one's off the mark. Here come the Paladins. Much more poise and patience tonight by the Paladins, taking their time. Very judicious on the offensive end. Skip pass. Smith for three. The ball. They know about Marcus Foster and his ability to back guys down. They sent the double team. Foster unselfish with great vision. Just the third three of the season for P.J. Smith. Henry Abraham answers with a triple. Abraham had just one point on 0 for 4 shooting last night, but he's already got three tonight. Foster off the mark on the three ball again. Nice job of Henry Abraham boxing out on that particular play against P.J. Smith. Foul on the floor, 14.53 to go. A spirited start to this game between Coastal and Furman. The shots up by one early. Early going of this second round matchup as part of Feast Week, the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Welcome into the HTC Center on the campus of Coastal Carolina in Conway, South Carolina. Alongside Damian Fishback, I'm Rich Hollenberg. Both of these coaches are really successful in their own right. Let's start with your former coach, Cliff Ellis, the winningest active head coach in D1 basketball. Yeah, this is a lot of fun, Rich, because you're looking at Coach Ellis, uh, the only coach to actually win 170 plus games at four different Division I schools. So he's on the latter end, but still being extremely successful. But then on the other hand, you've got Bob Ritchie, who was a finalist for the Hugh Durham Coach of the Year Award, Skip Prosser Man of the Year Award, and was able to take the Paladins to their first NCAA tournament berth since 1980. And how about their first tournament victory since 1974? So it's intriguing to see both of them, one still getting started and building the culture, and then Coach Ellis still hanging on where we've lost so many great coaches. You see the list of names up there, but he's just been a phenomenal coach, and he continues to get better. Yeah, Cliff Ellis has coached at four D1 schools, and like you said, 170-plus wins Ooh, at each of one of those schools. South Alabama, Clemson, Auburn, and now Coastal Carolina. And he says he is not tired of coaching at all, <laughs> no. and the kids are the reason why he keeps coming back. Yeah, that's right. And, and he's always been a father figure for all of his players. He continues to be that way. You know, I think the hunger, the appetite is still there. The players still want him there. But he, you know, he, like a lot of other coaches who have left, whether that's Coach K, Jay Wright, Roy Williams, I think a lot of coaches have gotten fatigued with the new evolution of basketball, whether that's the NIL or the transfer portal. And he's gotten hurt by that a little bit the last couple of years. Coach Ellis put some subs on the floor after that first timeout. Miroslav Stoffel's on the floor. He tried for that rebound just now. And John Sanders, number 10 in tier, on for the shots. Here's J.P. Pegues. Slow start for him yesterday, but he ended up with 20 points on the game. Averaging 21 and a half in his first two this season. P.J. Smith short on the three attempt. It's out of bounds, and it'll be Coastal Carolina basketball. Your officials tonight, Les Jones, Kevin Mathis, and Craig Merlin. Yeah, and there's Les, the venerable one himself. Doesn't he seem like he gets younger with every game? There, there are some guys in the college basketball game yeah. that are like that. The, the one that comes to mind more than anyone, Leonard Hamilton, the head coach of Florida State. <laughs> no doubt. Every time I see Coach Hamilton, I tell him he's the youngest-looking 70-year-old I've ever met. 
where Coach Leonard Hamilton actually recruited my father. Coach Ellis coached my father as well. And Coach Leonard Hamilton, another one of those guys at Florida State who's dealing with some of the guys moving right. Matthew Cleveland goes to Miami. But you do not count out Leonard Hamilton at any time. And keep your eyes on the Seminoles this year. Jacob Meyer, tough two for the freshman. He has an early five, and it's a 14-11 coastal lead. Both teams shoot 50% from the field to start out. He harassed, found an open lane. The one more, and Pegues pays it off. JP Pegues, a guy who doesn't need a lot of room to be able to score. He does an outstanding job of making decisions, plays with a very high basketball IQ. Stoffel sets the screen, Sanders uses it. Back to Stoffel, and he turns it over. Don't most coaches say never feed a big man with a bounce pass? Yeah, <laughs> they want to keep it up high. He's short on that one. Good tap back by Garrett Heen. Now Carter Witt for three. Off the mark. Loose ball. Sanders comes away with it. In nice transition. Pass. And it is a track meet here inside the HTC Center in the early going. Davis Molnar on the floor. Didn't get much run last night, but he will tonight. Heen off the mark. First tie of the game at 14 apiece. And Les Jones says, that's a turnover. Yeah, well, right now, you're looking at teams, and uh, they've been plagued by turnovers. Six turnovers between the two teams currently. Already five turnovers for Cliff Ellis's Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Here's Molnar in the corner. I think Nichols might have gotten a piece of that one on the closeout. Ian Granja, short on the three. And Carter Witt traveled with it. Timeout on the floor. A competitive matchup between the Furman Paladins and the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. Back in the day, and Gene Katie, everyone's favorite grandpa, is in the house. <laughs> and he's sitting next to Carolyn Ellis. Well, you see seven times coach of the year. And, uh, you know, he's done such a phenomenal job. And you think about coaches that have left imprints on this game. And we talked about some of them earlier. But there's kind of a torch that's being passed. And so the question is, who's going to carry that torch now? Will it be? Bill Self, will it be Coach Cal, Tony Bennett? There's so many coaches that have won championships of late, and one of those, and Coach Hurley, just won a championship at UConn, and I think he's probably still a coach that's still underrated and still fighting for his respect. Well said, my friend. Damian Fishback, Rich Hollenberg, and the rest of our ESPN crew on hand in Conway, South Carolina. This is the consolation side of the bracket. Both of these teams lost in the quarterfinals but are playing like it's March right now. Here's John Sanders. And a rebound and put back by number 55 in Teal, Jimmy Nichols' first bucket of the night. Yeah, Jimmy Nichols doing a nice job. High motor being extremely active both inside and out for the shot to clears tonight. Furman won for their last seven from the field. They need a bucket. Still trailing only by two. Nice feed to Bowser. And the freshman, Cooper Bowser, has a chance. I love a three point play. Rich, I love Coach Richie's decision to put Bowser in this basketball game. I think he's raw, but I think he is a future pro. You're thinking about a guy who's 6'11, but guess what? He's got a 7'5 wingspan. And how about that touch with the kiss off of the glass? I love him taking advantage of the opportunity. We saw him last night, three points and three boards against Liberty. He already has three tonight as he completes the three-point play. Interesting story with Bowser when the assistants on Bob Ritchie's staff came to him and said, 
hey, we need a big guy. Let's go to the transfer portal. And he said, I'm <laughs> yeah. done with the transfer portal. Find me the best remaining big man in high school. And Cooper Bowser was the answer. Analytics, such a big part of the game today. But Bob Ritchie trusts his gut. And more often than not, that gut pays off. No doubt about it. You know, he's built the program, and he's done it in the right way. Sweet J from J.P. Pegues. J.P. Pegues, a guy who almost had a triple-double and now has the Paladin fans involved and active. Largest lead of the game. It's just four, but they've trailed most of this first half. Sanders in the lane, no good. Molnar, the rebound. Foster. Got it knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be Coastal Basketball. One thing I love about J.P. Pagese's game is that he always seems to be under control. He was coming down the floor, gathered one, two, stepped into it with follow-through. A very confident player that I'm sure Coach Ritchie is glad to have. Preseason all SoCon is J.P. Pagese, and his head coach feels like he could be the player of the year when it's all said and done. He certainly got an opportunity, and I expect Furman to compete to win the league once again this year and be dancing come March. So Preseason number one in the Southern Conference. Most people thinking they have a very good chance to repeat. Easily forced that one up. Ojiako cleans it up. Ojiako doing a nice job on the glass once again. Always an ingredient for winning that Coach Ellis has used his entire career. One thing that Cliff Ellis has is veteran depth. John Ogiaco is one of two players who's been on three different teams and is in his fifth year of basketball. Yeah. Three seasons at Virginia Tech, George Mason as well. And you think about what he brings to this basketball team from the athleticism, his motor, but more than anything, I love his passion for the game. Now he needs to take a seat on the bench by his coach because he's saddled with those two fouls. 9.29 to go in the first half. The lob to Bowser couldn't handle it. And what a putback by Marcus Foster. That is a veteran move. Yeah, never panicked, so composed, and now stretches this lead out to four points. Foster already in double digits. Smith for three. In and out. Easily the rebound. Love the pace and tempo of this basketball game. Blackman has two threes already, not that time. And Stoffel turns it over. Yeah, Stoffel had the right idea, just rushed himself underneath. And you have to wonder if this slowing the pace right now by Bob Ritchie is another uh, nod to the fact that they are so undermanned. That one blocked, and Coastal trying to turn it into points. And they do, Stoffel with his first two. Foster, 30 points yesterday, and continues to keep the team on his back, surrounded, sworn, but to no avail for the shot to clear is Foster with the finish. You're watching right now on ESPN Plus. Don't get too excited. We hate to tease you with a shot of Mike Bothwell in the Furman <laughs> huddle. He is out of eligibility. 
He was playing pro ball in Israel and came home because of what's going on overseas. But man, Bob Ritchie probably wishes he had an extra year of eligibility with how undermanned this team is right now. You know, I actually had a chance to speak with him before the game, and I just said, how are you doing, you know, having that contract over at Israel and then having to come back? He said, I'm okay. He said, the waiting game's a little challenging sometimes. He said, but the good news is I'm working out twice a day. I get to be around these guys and continue to work on my game separate. And so he's had, he has the right mindset, uh, obviously safety first for him right now, and he's a guy that's going end up in the right place at the right time. All-time wins lead for the Furman Paladins. 116 wins to his credit. Uh, Jalen Slauson also 116 wins. He's playing with Sacramento. Yeah, got that Second call up, didn't pick. he, Rich? That's a residue of success for a program, is it not? Absolutely, and it, and it gives Coach Ritchie an opportunity to let other guys know that they can come there and still reach all of their goals and aspirations. Meyer? Like a bull in a china shop out there. Foster thought about the three. And they say it's going to stay with the Paladins. You know, in tournaments like these, it gives teams an opportunity to learn about themselves. And I think that Coach Richie and Furman will benefit from not having guys and, and even taking that loss yesterday. Oftentimes you learn more from a loss than you do from a win. And I can tell the adjustments that they've already made in this basketball game, the decisions they're making in the open floor, how they're working together as a cohesive unit, uh, something that Coach Richie, I, I'm sure, loves to see. Well, Bob Richie's only 40 years old, one of the younger head coaches in D1 basketball. But he's somewhat of an old soul. He wasn't even born the last time the Paladins won an NCAA <laughs> tournament game in 1974. But he was telling us he, he's a, an avid and voracious reader. He reads a lot of books on business yep. and on history, not just about basketball. Interesting man to talk to. Yeah, and I think he's a player's coach as well. Ten on the shot clock for the Dins. Foster, got it! He's feeling it again. 13 for Marcus Foster. Here's Granja. Offensive board, Blackman. Nice Euro. Oh, and he back ironed it. Nice opportunity now for Furman to try to stretch this lead. He's been hot. Not that time for Marcus Foster, but it's been all number five for Furman. Well, we talked about him having 30 points in the opening round. I think he's still sizzling from yesterday, partner. I mean, the, the rim just looks extremely big for him right now. He's flowing, playing with confidence, and most importantly, his teammates continue to find him. How about this? He had 17 in the first half yesterday, 13 already today with over six minutes to go. And now Bob Rich is going small with his lineup. Cooper Bowser out. Garrett Heen at 6'9", is the tallest paladin on the floor right now. And that's a firm in turnover. Number five. This evening for the yeah. Bob Ritchie's Palace. That was just miscommunication on that particular trip. Molnar was cutting to the basket, and uh, there was an anticipation he would stay spread and wide. Now, Coastal Carolina trying to get clicking on offense again. They're one for their last ten. Blackman! Ends that skid. His third triple of the night. He has nine. The ball reversed sides of the floor three times on that particular play, and that's what made the defense get sucked in and get that wide open look. As a three-point shooter, you start salivating when you see that happen. <laughs> and Pegues has an answer. His third three of the night. Tell you what, when this Furman team gets healthy, they are going to be a challenge to deal with in the SoCon and all across the country. J.P. Pegues, the SOCON MOP when they won last year and went on to the big dance. And, of course, he authored one of the most memorable shots in any NCAA tournament. We 
talked about the depth of Furman. See, J.P. Pagese, he doesn't need a lot of room, right? Uh, he just needs about a foot of separation. And he's got a quick release, a nice high release, and that's why he's a challenge to deal with. Bob Ritchie's back with P.J. Smith and J.P. Pagese, both at around six foot, six one. They're small, yeah. but man, they are jitterbug fast. And here they are. You see, these are the decisions that yesterday versus Liberty where the Paladins rushed it a little bit. They tried to force the issue. They're playing much more judicious and taking their time. Great feed from Smith to Cooper Bowser. And Bowser's got five. Backdoor cut, hammer pass. And the three ball drops for Keith Kylan Blackman. He has 12 on four threes. Yeah, give credit though to Henry Abram for the extra pass. He could have tried to force the shot on that particular trip. Kylan Blackman's already doubled his point total from last night against Wichita State. Bowser, the offensive board. Oh, scramble for it, and they call it a jump ball. We'll find out when we come back from break. 3.56 to go. Furman with a four-point lead over Coastal. There. On ABC, it's Duke taking on number six, Stanford, inside Maples Pavilion at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. You won't want to miss that matchup. And women's college basketball has been as entertaining, if not more, than the men's game in the early going this year. A couple of top teams, LSU, UConn, already losing this season. Yep. Parity reigns in the women's game. <laughs> no doubt. And uh, Carol Lawson will be anxious for that game. Suffered their first home loss, so they'll be anxious to make up for it against Stanford. Obviously, year in and year out, Stanford a quality team, but you talked about it. You know, young women like uh, Clark and, and Angel Reese just put on shows each and every time they step out onto the floor. And I think women's basketball continues to elevate itself year in and year out. And earlier tonight, Kansas State's women's basketball team it's coming, it's coming, pulled off coming. another upset. They took down number two, Iowa. Hey, 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 hey. Ten to shoot for the Paladins. Pegese got his own miss. Wild pass, ill-advised by Foster. Easily that line drive three, no good. And the foul's going to be called. Looks like it's going to go on Davis Mullen. No, they give it to Pegese instead. Paladin fans do not like that at all. In unbelief. Coach to Carolina, ready to try to take advantage on this inbound pass. Just the third foul by Furman in this first half, and we have under three and a half to go. Blackman, short. Gives Furman an opportunity to push. And things are getting really physical when Davis Molnar is around the ball. Well, let's call a spade a spade. This is, this is the second game. If you lose today, then you are one of those teams that could potentially leave this tournament 0-3. And I don't care how good the field is, you don't want to leave your own. On Sunday, and so this game is so important and so valuable. There'll be one team that leaves 0-3, and, and another team that leaves 3-0. Davis Molnar, a redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, knocks down the first free throw, and he goes two for two. Continues to take strides in the right direction after redshirting his freshman year. Furman's led by as many as seven in this first half. Their lead is six right now, under three minutes left. Easily 
He's been quiet, but a nice baseline drive by Kevin Easley. Yeah, nice his first bucket of the game. Sorry about that, Rich. He's, you know, he's been settling for the jump shot, even though he can knock down the three-point shot. I think he's been shooting contested threes. That time, he attacked the basket instead. Molnar for three. And Easley, the weak side rebound. Good hands. Stolen away by Molnar. He's got a nose for the basketball. Wide open. Foster looked good off his hand. Abraham gave it up. Now Pegues from the corner. Back and forth we go with not a bucket to show for it. <laughs> that one's going to go on P.J. Smith. You know, back and forth we go, but frankly, not in a positive way. Uh, I think both of these teams are in a rush on the offensive end. Turnovers, offensive rebounds, those are extra opportunities either for yourself or for the other team. And we saw a team that was clicking on all cylinders. We get to watch them in our next game in Liberty that did a great job of taking care of the basketball. I think both teams have to focus on that here tonight as well. Kylan Blackman showing a little fatigue at the free throw line, comes up short on that. He was the top three-point shooter on this Chanticleers team last year, 37% from beyond the arc for the redshirt junior out of Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah, he's, and got a, he's got a Baker's dozen now. He's got a much bigger role this year, right? Played in 25 games last year, but only five starts. And so uh, even though he hit double digits six times, you can tell he has a much greater role this season than he did last year. Carter Witt, too strong. Once again, the shots want to push. Iso. Stolen away by Witt. Playing free safety along the baseline. Pretty good recovery defensively by Coastal Carolina off of the turnover. Here's Heen off the window. Big boy basketball. First two for Garrett Heen, number 13 in white. And Furman's up by five with a minute to go. Now he gets his hands on that one. It's a two on one. And Foster the easy two. Big Din Energy inside the HTC Center right now. Their largest lead of the game. Once again, we see turnovers leading to offensive points for Furman. They've been testy defensively. They've done a great job of moving their feet, having fun here at Myrtle Beach. Even Alex Williams, he's sidelined right now in that gray suit, but everybody excited uh, for the run that Furman has made here of late. Hey, you see Tyrese Huey celebrating there. You're like, take it easy, young man. You got to get back <laughs> on the floor. How about the night so far from these two? Talk about a two-headed monster. Two of the stars last year are back for Bob Ritchie this year, and they are balling out so far inside the HTC Center. Well, they're doing a nice job of getting it in transition before the defense is set up uh, for Coastal Carolina. 11 points now off of their turnovers, so almost a third of their points coming from points off of turnovers for Furman. John Sanders, left-handed Jay in the paint. Furman doing a really nice job of changing the pace almost every possession. Well, they changed the pace that time. He doing a nice job of slashing to the basket, Rich. They are doing an extremely good job of finding one another, forming chemistry here. There was three guys for Coastal Carolina that went after the basketball. Miscommunication, not enough talking, pointing on the defensive end, and he right there to take advantage. And if you remember, it was Garrett Heen who made that steal off of Kihei Clark and then fed J.P. Pegues <laughs> for the game-winning three in the NCAA tournament against Virginia. Pegues with a little payback there. You know, we're not going to have 
too many Virginia fans. <laughs> Keep bringing it up, but Furman's got to love it, right? That's right. <laughs> this is a huge play right here to make sure you get the last shot for Coastal simply because you're down eight. You don't want to get the basketball back to Furman going into the half of momentum. Last shot time for the shots. One second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And Sanders takes it, misses. Blackman misses as well. 18 points in the paint. Sure. Conversely, Coastal is down by eight, but they out-rebounded Furman 25-17. They've committed 12 turnovers. Yeah, it all boils down to those points off of turnovers that were 11, and it looks like it's reversed a little bit here in this second half. Up and, and under, no good from Meyer, but the follow is good. First five minutes, always critical. We talked about the absence of the players. Let's watch and see how the energy of the Paladins hold up here in the second half as well. Again, Coastal playing on their home floor, but wearing the road teal jerseys. There's Cooper Bowser starting in place of the injured Tyrese Huey and the injured Ben Vanderwall. Paladins playing very shorthanded tonight. Yeah, depleted roster, but showing a lot of resilience in the first half. I expect nothing different from Coach Bob Ritchie's program here in the second. Easily, a little off balance on that attempt. Bean picks it up, up ahead to Foster. Foster under control. How many times have we seen defense to offense for Furman tonight? They need to continue to be testy, go after the basketball, use their hands, and on the other side for Coastal Carolina, they have to do a better job of taking care of the basketball to get back in this game. Henry Abraham hasn't found the offense so far in this invitation. Again, Furman came to Coastal Carolina for this Invitational without the services of Alex Williams. A big loss for them. There's P.J. Smith with the mid-range game. Then Tyrese Huey injured his groin before yesterday's game, missed that one. There's Williams on the bench looking resplendent in that suit. And then we found out just before tip tonight that Ben Vanderwall, who started in place of Huey, who was starting in place of Alex Williams, that he was no longer going to be available yeah. tonight. Yeah, that's why I'm talking about the fact that Furman is doing such a nice job of showing how passionate they are, the fight that they have in them, which stems from their head coach. Easily another rebound. Abraham, short on the three. Big offensive board by Big John Ogiaco. And let's remember, Big John Ogiaco got into foul trouble in that first half as well. He looks like he's ready to play here in the second half. Coastal has 12 offensive rebounds. Haven't always turned those into points, but they are yeoman-like on the glass. Good ball movement by the Dins in the corner. Foster comes up empty. Looks like he rushed that one just a little bit. Coach Ellis and Sean Clear switched to a, to a zone on that particular play just to disrupt the offense of the Paladins. Ten to shoot. Good pass. And Ojiaco will go to the line. You know, Kylan Blackman at 6'3", 208 pounds, has really done a nice job of using his body, right? At 208, you don't always have to be quicker, but you go shoulder to shoulder, and he's able to go by the freshman and get to the rim, but also able to give it up to Ojiaco. A nice job of penetrating and pitching by Kylan Blackman. That's a veteran move going up against the bigger yet younger yeah. Cooper Bowser. <laughs> he knew it's a mismatch, and I could take him off the bounce. He did, fed Ojiaco, and now John Ojiaco at the line and knocks down the first free throw. Cliff Ellis calls John Ojiaco my kind of man, a throwback. What does he mean by that? Well, he's the type of guy who attacks at all times, right? Uh, you, you gotta love that he plays with the high motor and he loves guys that go to the offensive glass, which is something that Ojiaco has continued to do throughout his career. The geese wide open. 
his fourth triple of the night, and J.P. Pegues has a dozen. And easily called for the traveling violation, an unforced turnover for Coastal. Well, now their 13th, I believe, 12th or 13th turnover. You just can't afford to give up those possessions if you're Coastal Carolina. And you talked about J.P. Pegues knocking down the three-point shot. He's a guy who can continue to put up those three-point shots. 23, 9, and 9 uh, in their win over Belmont earlier this season. Came into this tournament shooting 43% from three. There's Molnar on the dish. And the goggles from Garrett Heath. <laughs> Hesitates and hits. Not a surprise. Jacob Meyer actually 3,280 points in high school. Good extra pass there. Foster took it strong to the hole, and he'll get two free throws. Well, this is what you're talking about. He's doing a nice job of keeping his head up and looking for Molnar to go to the basket. There he goes, Rich. There go your goggles. P.P. Geese has 12 points tonight on four of six shooting from beyond the arc, but last year he made a name for himself. He was so good in the SOCON championship, named the most outstanding player after averaging 21 points, five boards, and three assists. And then he won up himself after Kihei Clark unbelievably turned it over in the late stages of this first round game. Garrett Heen found Pegues and buckets. Ooh. What a huge shot, and you can see the jubilation by the Furman Paladins. And the question is, why did Kihei Clark make that pass? And I'll tell you why. You know, with six, seven seconds left on the clock, I know a lot of people probably remember Magic Johnson yes. did that one year when he was in the corner, and it just bounced just enough, and he looked brilliant. But Kihei Clark just wasn't able to see. Obviously, Kihei Clark's not 6'9", like Magic Johnson was. And it just He's closer to 5'9". Yes, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. And it just didn't work out. But it did work out for Furman and the power. Got that first NCAA tournament win since 1974. Ojiaco, nice touch with the baby hook. Yeah, nice poise display. I think they have an advantage in the interior. You know, just pounding the basketball inside, but they can't continue to get to that if they turn the basketball over. Witt showing that stroke, the Wake Forest transfer. Well, you know, you talk about a starter coming here to Furman and not quite getting the minutes that he probably thought he was going to get, but that shot probably gave him a lot more confidence that he was in the right program and on the right team. Top point guard coming out of high school in North Carolina a couple of years ago. Here's Ojiaka, 10 on the shot clock. Tried to step through, got the foul. Did they count it? They want to count the bucket. It is an and one for Big John Ojiaka. What about the ability to move through creases in space? And I think it's the right call. He was certainly in the shooting motion. And right now, Colston, Carolina, trying to display that they're down by 10 points, but that they are far from out. Already a productive night for John Ojiaka. He's got 10 to go along with seven rebounds. Coastal down nine, 14, 40 to go. Furman, you want to continue to maintain your patience. Done a nice job of not rushing things tonight as they did versus Liberty last night. Here's Witt. Nice follow left hand, no good from Foster out of bounds. Coastal Carolina basketball. Well, the women's college hoop season is underway, and tonight at the top of the hour, we have our featured matchup on ESPN Plus. The defending national champions, number seven LSU, taking on Southeast Louisiana at eight Eastern, seven Central. Tigers stubbed their toe versus yeah. Colorado, but at the end of the day, Angel Reese, I think, will learn from that loss, and they'll be extremely ready to go in Southeast Louisiana. They put a hunch up on <laughs> their last opponent, and Kim Mulkey, you know, 
No one oh likes to take goodness. an L like that more than Kim Mulkey. No, she stays fired up, and she'll be fired up tonight as well. Here's Jimmy Nichols. Conway Native. Woo! Left hand, Jay. Old school. Southpaw looked like a little Stacy Augman with that jumper on that particular play. Like that, Raph. Win. He's missed his last two. Most little chance to make it a two possession ball game here. Meyer off two feet. Only a freshman, but precocious. <laughs> no doubt, partner. And you know what? Right now, if you're firm in a huge possession, don't need to rush it, still have a two possession lead. Uh, but you want to try to get the basketball into the hands of Marcus Foster, who's been sensational on the night. And he wants the basketball, but it's Garrett Heen left alone, short on the three. Foster is screaming for the ball on that last possession. Blackman got the foul, didn't get the bucket. He'll go to the line and shoot a pair. You know, we talked about this at halftime, Rich, both you and I. And let me give you an idea. As a player, when you're getting let's say six, eight, or even 10 minutes a game, you kind of get conditioned to those eight to 10 minutes. You're looking at a guy like Cooper Bowser, hands on his knees right there, with hands on his knees. It's very difficult as a player when you get unexpected minutes because you're not accustomed to playing 25, 30 minutes in a basketball game, and particularly when you just played a game yesterday. So let's keep our eye on the fatigue of Furman here in this second half. Postal in the midst of an 8-0 run. Blackman looking to make it 9-0. And he can. This is that. The follow, though, by John Ogiaco. Unfortunately, for Coastal Carolina fans, he certainly got caught with that foul. It was the right call, partner. And, and Ogiaco has been a huge difference maker in this basketball game. He'll now have to come out. That's three fouls on big John Ogiaco. Now Furman needs a counterpunch. An 8-0 coastal run. Furman's drought is going on seven minutes, but it's ended emphatically by Marcus Foster with an and one. Beautiful basketball. I think there was miscommunication defensively for Coastal Carolina. They didn't know who they were guarding. Look at the two bigs there. They're a little confused. And how about Marcus Foster moving without the basketball? You talk about greats like Steph Curry, even other shooters like Reggie Miller. Those guys were terrific in moving without the basketball. You only have the ball in your hands a very limited amount of time. What you do when it's not in your hands makes a difference. And once again, if you saw that replay, it was Foster, the five-year senior, working on Jacob Meyer, the freshman. <laughs> Got him on the back door. Blackman, pull up. Nice screen and re-screen. Tyler Blackman fired up right now here at home. He's tied his career high with 16 tonight. Just a four-point Furman lead with the basketball. Witt left all alone for three. Again, miscommunication. Furman takes advantage. Witt now starting to find himself from behind that three-point line. Furman's eighth three, but they've jacked up 28 of them tonight. Good pass. Oh, and it's swallowed up by Bowser. He shows signs, doesn't he? He has the length, he has the wingspan at seven foot five. He has the athleticism, still raw, but right where he needs to be under Coach Bob Ritchie to continue to reach his goals. From out of Sunrise Christian. Twelve minutes to go in the game, ten on the shot clock. Here's the freshman Meyer. Four to shoot. Abraham, good shot pick, but he didn't get it off. A good defensive stand by the Paladin to lead by seven with 11.47 to go. Well, the Paladin's <laughs> continuing to strike while the iron is hot, and there it is. Carter Witt with the trifecta.
Myrtle Beach Invitational. Coming up after this game is complete, we'll have the second semifinal. It pits Wichita State and Liberty. It's coming up at 9 Eastern on ESPNU. Give us a preview, partner. Ooh, we got a great one. You know, you got a team in Wichita State that has the athleticism, the length, and, and even a staff that's very familiar with, with high major schools. We talked about Cleveland being in Arkansas, right? All the time Paul Mills spent at Baylor. They're going to have the size advantage, but how about that foot speed of Liberty? The way they are disciplined, the way they move the basketball, shoot the basketball, it is going to be an intriguing mixture of styles and a great game that we have later tonight. Richie McKay's Liberty Flames, number 345, according to Ken Palm, in adjusted tempo. But don't tell the Flames that. <laughs> no, they, they put up 86 last, last night. night. <laughs> they said, look at that tempo, Rich. <laughs> Coach Ellis comes out, it looks like, in a zone to try to disrupt the rhythm and offense of the Paladins here on this particular trip. Good ball movement in the corner. Smith makes some pay. Beautiful ball movement, the extra pass always pays dividends, and it did on that trip for Furman. Furman's four for nine from beyond the arc in the second half. That went off the mark from Stoffel. And with 11 minutes to go in this game, Coastal's in a little bit of a danger zone right now, down by 10. Good back back door, Foster again, and the goggles from Heat again. Once again, Ojiako out of the basketball game, and he's on the sideline waiting to come in, but that's when they made the run in the first half, and right now Furman making it again. Stoffel for three, got it. Huge shot to stop the hemorrhaging for Coastal Carolina. Stoffel taking advantage of his time. Nice stroke from outside in the perimeter. You see a couple of substitutions in Easley and Ojiako coming into the game. Cliff Ellis going small right now and not liking what he sees, so he's got his two bigs coming back on the floor in a moment. Carter Wick with the left hand. Quick. Halfway through the second half. Furman up 11. Abraham found himself all alone and contributes with the deuce. It's almost like he said, you're not going to guard me. I'll take it. Once again, an impressive effort from the Southern Conference champs, the Furman Paladins, down three rotation players, but still up by nine. Traveling violation called on Coastal. Yeah, Jimmy Nichols just rushed it once again, but Furman hasn't been rushing it tonight. You see he, Nichols that time loses his man. As a defender, you always have to have your eyes, not your goggle eyes, but you just your normal eyes on the ball and man. A nice job of Heen finding Foster on that back cut. Biggest fly in the ointment for Cliff, Cliff Ellis's club tonight. 15 turnovers, and Furman's turned that into 16 points off those. Yeah, turnovers. you just got to take care of the basketball, no matter how well you rebound the basketball, and especially live ball turnovers, right? That was a different turnover for Furman. They still are able to set their defense. Blackman, catch and release. That fella been hot tonight. Fifth three-pointer of the night for Kylan Blackman. He has a team-high 19. Nice decision that time by Heen. Continuing to be patient. Then the shoot for the Dins. With five on the clock. Pretty. Again! That is a prime example of how you move the basketball and how when you break down a defense from side to side, you get better looks. They passed up looks that were okay for a great look at the end. Here's Easley. Quiet night for him. Inside, Ojiako. And he's got the follow slam. O 
Ojiako doing a nice job of continuing the battle. His presence has been felt the entire night. He just has to stay out of foul trouble. If I'm firm and I'd go at him, he's got three. A career high for Ojiako, a career high for Keelan Blackman, but it's Furman up by seven with 7.49 to go. Here at the Myrtle Beach Invitational, come on back for the finale. The Invitational where the Furman Paladins are up seven. Rich Hollenberg and Damian Fishback. Take a look here. Marcus Foster on a penetration. And watch on this freeze here. When P.J. Pegues catches the basketball, all of Coastal Carolina's defense is discombobulated. It's because they move the side of the ball from they reverse side to the floor. And that, in essence, leaves Carter Whip wide open for the three-point shot. So when coaches are telling players to reverse sides of the floor, to be patient on the offensive end, that is why you pass up good looks to get great looks, Rich. And just looking at the scoring sheet for the Furman Paladins, they are sharing the sugar tonight. <laughs> One, two, three, four different Furman Paladins have three or more assists tonight. Wow. Led by Garrett Heen. Mr. Goggles has eight dimes. It all adds up to a seven-point Paladin lead. 7.40 to go. Blackman top two. He went right at the freshman. Strong. Cooper Bowser was there. He didn't foul, though, but he certainly felt that weight of Blackman on the interior. And now Blackman almost gets the steal. A career high 21 for zero and teal, Keelan Blackman. Well, we talk about the upside of Cooper Bowser. This time, though, he was hugging his man a little bit. You're supposed to have early help. He got there just a little bit late. He was out of position. He'll learn and he'll improve from that. But the good news is he went straight up, uh, kept his verticality and did not foul. But give credit to Blackman. He went strong to the basket. Pardon my mispronunciation. It is Kylan Blackman, but he has been a key tonight for Coastal <laughs> no Carolina. No doubt. Here's Witt. He's had a hot hand. Wow. But he's called for the travel. Yeah, and that time he just tried to do a little too much. I mean, Witt has done a phenomenal job of just knocking down the open shot. Highly recruited, right, out of high school. And we talked about uh, starting for a little bit when he was at Wake Forest. He's just got to take that shot and shoot it with confidence. Still a puncher's chance for the shot to clear. Find themselves down five with seven minutes to go, playing on their home floor as the host of the Myrtle Beach Invitation. You know, with seven minutes left to go in this basketball game, obviously it's up for grabs. Coastal Carolina not able to quite get over the hump, and it's because of the resilience that we've seen by Furman. We talk about the absence of three, four players tonight, but they're not showing fatigue. They're continuing to fight through it right now. The veteran Ojiako working on the youngster, Cooper Bowser. Comes up short, and here come the Paladins. Solid job defensively by Coastal Carolina. They do a good job of getting back in defensive transition when they don't turn the basketball over. Deep three. Pegues around and out. And a good block out by Blackman on the big man, Bowser. Here's Easley. Full head of steam. And the three ball in the corner from Ian Grunja. Big shot. Now we've got some game pressure, and now the shot to clear fans get involved. And a timeout called by Bob Ritchie. The Furman Paladins have led for most of this game, but now they're only up two with 6.14 to go. It's a men's college basketball doubleheader at Madison Square Garden on ESPN. The number five UConn Huskies take on the Indiana Hoosiers at 1 Eastern. Then number 19 Texas takes on the Louisville Cardinals. An exciting day of basketball in New York City. Damian Fishback and I will be here on Sunday for the championship game of the Myrtle Beach Invitational. But right now we've got a bit of a barn burner here in the consolation round. Furman up two with just a few ticks more than six minutes to go. And Coastal has tightened things up in the second half, but Marcus Foster trying to put a nail in the coffin. Yeah, great set out of the timeout by Coach Bob Ritchie. One of the reasons why Coastal has closed the gap, though, is only three turnovers in the second half after 12 turnovers in the first half. Jacob Myers got 11. The Furman lead is three. Both teams shooting close to 60% in the second half. 
Witt, aggressive, swatted by Ojiako. And they're going to count the basket for Carter Witt. So he's got a Baker's dozen. Ojiako disagrees, not surprisingly. Couldn't quite tell from that angle in live motion. Looked like a pretty good block. In pickup basketball, we, we probably would have had to shoot for that. <laughs> but you got to count it now. Huge shoot for Furman. And keeps the pressure on Coastal Carolina. Uh, kept it on the pick and roll with Ojiaco. Swatted out of bounds. And it'll be Coastal Ball with 17 on the shot clock. What would you like to see here from this Coastal offensive possession? Well, I like either Easley or Ojiaco getting the basketball towards the rim. And there goes the turnovers that have continued to bite the shot to clears all night long. In transition and one Marcus Foster. He has 27 and a chance to make it 28, knocking on the door of another 30-point performance. Once again, you turn it over, never give your defense a chance to get set up. You can see Coastal Carolina's trying to get back. I love the pressure that Furman has continued to keep on the shot to clears offensively as well as defensively. 28 points for Marcus Foster on the heels of a 30-point outburst in the first game of the Invitational. another unforced error by the shot to clear. Well, the biggest question that Coastal Carolina is going to have to answer in the year is who's going to run that point guard position? Because I can tell whether it's Henry Abraham that's been in the basketball game, Jacob Meyer, uh, Sanders who's been in the game at times. They haven't quite figured that out yet. I switched that time between Easley and Blackman. He didn't have a mismatch on Abraham. It's Foster with seven to shoot. Another strong take. This one rolls off. Foster gets it back. And no whistle. Easley. shoot a really accurate shot because he doesn't put a lot of arc on his jump shot. Good pass. Here's Witt from the corner. And Easley was slow to get up. He almost got his hands on that ball. Foster off the mark. And you can tell both of these teams are starting to feel the fatigue back-to-back -back games on back-to-back -back nights. It's a slugfest. Furman leads it by eight. We're back with the final 358 after this. Well, it has been a tournament to remember so far for number five in white, Marcus Foster in the middle of that Paladin huddle. Damian Fishback, he is now combined in two games for 58 points. Even if he didn't score another point in this tournament, it's already good for eighth all time at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. Yeah, he's definitely continued to prove very worthy of being named to the preseason All-Southern Conference team. And you think about his teammates, right? J.P. Pagese and uh, Alex Williams. And there's a lot of other guys on this team you can talk about, but he's making a statement in this tournament that he's going to have to be looked at as a potential player of the year in the conference. And he's certainly putting the Paladins on his back, not only last night, but tonight as well. Talking to Bob Ritchie, he said he was obsessed this summer with improving his three-point stroke. Didn't start out well for him. They played North Greenville, a small school right near their South Carolina school. He went one for seven in that game. But after that against Belmont, went four for nine for three. Last night against Liberty, three for six from three. Tonight, he's poured in 28 points again. His next point will vault into sixth all-time in Myrtle Beach Invitational Tournament history. There's Ojiaco with the two hands left. That was a terrific play. It was a called set right out of the timeout. They went high-low over the top. They got it to where they wanted it. 
Big John Ojiako. Foster hasn't shot it well tonight from beyond the arc, two for ten, but he's done his damage getting to the basket. And Carter Witt has really been a safety valve for Bob Ritchie on the offensive end with how shorthanded he is. Got a Baker's dozen. And Cliff Ellis calls a timeout. Well, he realizes that he can't take it home with him. And so, with 2.58 left to go in this basketball game, every possession so critical. Jacob Meyer, we talked about it earlier. He is a scoring freshman, 3,280 points in high school, finalist for Kentucky Mr. Basketball, with a huge basket on this possession. Look at Coach Ellis. <laughs> you think he's tired of coaching yet? He wants to go another 10 years. But he also wants to get a win as well and give credit to uh, Jacob Meyer, who's done a nice job. You look at those points that he's accustomed to putting up, 38.3 as a junior, 36 or close to 37 as a senior. He's a guy who's accustomed to putting the basketball in the hoop. Finished just behind. Young man by the name of Reed Shepard, who's plying his wares for John Calipari and looking good so far at the start of his Wildcats career. Yeah, and Reed Shepard has what I call designer genes. Both mom and dad were extremely quality players. Huge defensive trip here for Coastal. Foster lurking. Heen with eight assists. Attempt to shoot for the Paladins. Here's Witt, fires away, and nails it! What a huge shot. How about the job of Furman showing so much patience tonight? It's almost like the game against Liberty rubbed off on them from last night. A career high now for Carter Witt, 18 points. Here's Meyer with an answer. answer. 16 for Jacob Meyer. Nice oh, feed. Oh. And Foster pays back Garrett Heed for all of his assists. Oh, oh, oh. oh the ball spin. <laughs> by Blackman. What an answer. These two teams not wanting to give up. Two possession game, though. Clark is the ally if you're firm in here. You just want to be smart with the basketball. No hurry right now. Haymakers being thrown by these two clubs. Witt. Carter Witt will go to the line. And if he makes these two free throws, Carter Witt's got 20 points tonight. Whew. Well, in an environment where you have players that seem to transfer as soon as something goes wrong, you always want to credit those guys that hang around, that stay. I call them culture guys in college basketball. Carter Witt is a prime example of just continuing to be patient, waiting for his time. And, you know, it's a Crimea River type of story. And Bob Ritchie was honest about it. He said, look, he was highly recruited coming out of North Carolina, the top point guard as a high schooler. And so, yeah, he went to a high major program, went sure. to Wake Forest, and even started as a freshman. But some things unfolded that, you know, were in or out of his control. And that's got to be tough for a kid who's basically never been told no and never failed before on the basketball court. Counting down to one minute to go. Furman with an eight-point lead. Well, so many seconds went off of the clock, and looks like Ojiako maybe it maybe took a shot in the face. Ojiako's gonna be whistled for the foul, but he's the one who's on the floor, got the worst of it. Here's
Big John playing in his third program. Started in Virginia Tech. Three years there. Last year at George Mason. Left after King in Kim English took the Providence job. And now Les Jones is helping him off the court. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think he was pointing to his mouth. We've already had Sincere Parker went down with St. Louis with a broken ankle. I hate to see these young men get injured. Obviously at a critical point here for Coastal Carolina. John Ogiaco has been such a key part in the early going for Cliff Ellis. Tonight he had 14 points and nine rebounds before having to check out. Wow. And that one was airmailed by the East. So you can hear the staff of Coastal Carolina hollering, don't foul. Obviously being so late into the shot clock and it ended up paying dividends. An eight point deficit. Furman right here, you certainly don't want to foul. Just try to make Coastal Carolina use some time. Coastal shot it well from the NBR. 10 for 23 tonight. And they might need to dial a few up from long distance to get back in this one. Yeah, well, an eight-point deficit is obviously a lot with 40 seconds left to go. You just need to score quick. Uh, the best thing to do would be to score while the clock is stopped. Nichols. That left here with a soft touch. <laughs> Foul called quickly on Pat Blackwell. These are huge free throws. Two possession game right now. The winner avoids playing in the seventh place game on Sunday here at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. And the ignominious distinction of potentially leaving Conway, South Carolina, 0-3. Mm. He's got the first. Career 72% free throw shooter. And you can tell that by his touch and poise. Who was the other side of the pillow? And Garrett Heen checks out with Davis Molnar, gets a big hand from the Paladin faithful. A career high eight assists for Garrett Heen tonight. Wow. 20 seconds left in the game, and it's academic at this point. Behind the back, Foster, he's got his 30 burger. Beautiful. And how fitting that Furman continues to score points off of turnovers. The difference in this basketball game. Coach Ellis calling the timeout, probably just wanting to teach his guys, help them to continue to learn, explain the situation of the game. But the story is the Furman Paladins and Coach Bob Ritchie answering a depleted team displaying a lot of resiliency. Carter Witt could have taken that up itself, but instead unselfish, which has certainly been a characteristic of the basketball team by Coach Bob Ritchie. Well, with 60 points, 30 in the game one, 30 tonight. Whew. Marcus Foster, with one game left on Sunday, is now sixth all time in scoring in Myrtle Beach Invitational history. Well, that's the good news. The bad news for him is with the depleted roster, he's not only going to be at the top of the scouting room report, but if you're facing the Paladins right now, you almost go boxing one. You, you, you make somebody else beat you from a guy who's put up 60 points in two days. That's something that Coach Bob Ritchie will have to prepare for, and he'll have a day to do that. Foul immediately. That one's called on Kevin Easley.
You know, this is the type of game that it may not mean a lot, right? You're two and one coming into this basketball game, and you say it's an early game in November, but this is a confidence builder. You're looking at Davis Molinar, red shirt freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's gained confidence from this basketball game tonight. One for two for that trip. And the Furman Paladins score 89 points and walk away with a round two victory. That'll set up a consolation bracket game on Sunday. Furman will take on Wyoming. Cliff Ellis and Bob Ritchie exchanging handshakes at center court. One of the youngest head coaches in college basketball, Bob Ritchie, just 40 years old.